Welcome to another episode of Today in Radio History. Today we spotlight an episode from the lives of Harry Lime, which was originally broadcast today, June 27th, 1952. Like, share, and subscribe to us below, and click that bell to receive notifications on our new video uploads. Orson Welles reprised his role of Harry Lime from the celebrated 1949 film adaptation of Graham Greene's novel, The Third Man. The radio series is a prequel to the film and predicts the many misadventures of con artist Lime in a somewhat lighter tone than the character's villainy in the film. Now you can download a digitally enhanced noise reduced version of today's episode and many more of your favorite radio episodes by clicking on the link below. Watch our video on how we clean up old audio files and be sure to visit us online at radiolongago.com. Today's episode, The Hard Way, originally aired on this date, June 27, 1952. Today in Radio History presents The Lives of Harry Lime. Well, 
Meanwhile, we got to live, Harry. That old man is the first objection to going straight that jumps into my mind. Well, Harry, we got the plane. It's a pretty good little plane. Oh, Harry, you know. No, no, flies okay, but yeah. a little bit like you and me. It's been around. Yeah, it's it's the chimes at midnight. We can shop around for a sucker, but what do we do in the interim, old man, for groceries? What would you say to this, Harry? How does this strike you? The Imperial Safeways Charter Flight Company Incorporated. Fly for private charter? Is that what you're driving at? Sure, it's a business, Harry. Uh, nice, quiet, steady little business. And no trouble with the cops. A nice, quiet, steady little business. And no trouble. <laughs> little did we know. Well, anyway, that's how Safeway's Plane Charter Incorporated was born. I bought myself a cap that said head pilot over the visor and sat down with Mo on our little farm. A nice sort of highway it was, near the French border, chosen during more adventurous days for its remoteness, to wait for official permission. With our reputation, that wasn't too easy to fix, but finally the phone rang, and sure enough, it was the brass down in Nice. Would I fly over for a talk? Well, Nice was about a 20-minute run from our private, uh, very private field, and Pretty soon, I was twisting my new cap nervously and trying to look as honest as possible for the benefit of some official or other who didn't, I must say, look very impressed. Lime? Uh, uh, yes, sir? We had a dossier here in France covering your suspected activities since mm-hmm. 1946. Oh, uh, yes, sir. I say suspected lime because we never actually caught you. Uh, no, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, no, sir. We have also reports from Italy, Switzerland, Austria, Germany, Portugal, Spain, Holland, and the Republic of San Marino. Hmm. Well, they never caught me either. As you say. Well, here is how I figure out the situation. Uh, yes, sir? You are requesting the right to operate a plane charter company. That's right, yes. You say that you propose to carry passengers or even freight yes. clear in the proper way through the proper channels. Uh, yes. Why? I beg your pardon? I ask you, why? Well, it is. It's a business. It's a nice, steady little business. Not as good as smuggling cigarettes, however. Uh, well, I really wouldn't know about that, sir. <laughs> of course not. <laughs> no. Now, then, mm. as I say, I figure the situation has two possible explanations. Yes, sir. Either you really want to operate an honest charter service with your little plane. Well, that's it, sir. That's exactly the... And here I want you to follow me very carefully. Yes, sir. Or... Or you are plotting something so deep, so sly, so crazy. Well, how can you think that? Under the circumstances, I have no choice but to comply with your request. Thank you. Sir. We are letting you start this chartered company line. We are permitting you to begin. Oh, thank you so much. I but can... we are keeping our eye on you, all of us, the police of every country in Western Europe. We are watching for hanky panky, Monsieur Line. And under the very first sign of hanky panky. The very first whistle, suspicion of anti panty you will wish that you had not come here, that you had never applied for your first commercial license. Indeed, Monsieur Light, you will wish that you had never been born. Hello, man. Yes, I don't like it. I don't oh, like what? it. What? Your papers like and all like that was a great. I don't like the official attitude as regards this little caper, Mo. All we got to do is break one routine little regulation, and we've had. Don't be such a pessimist. It's true, old man. That's it. It's a one little slip. That's all they're waiting for. Don't forget they know us. They're just waiting now for the chance to crack down on us for everything we got away with before. Start reading the fine print and all the rules and regulations, Mo, friend of my youth. Somewhere there's a little joker about tipping your right wing to Matterhorn or flying south on the first Sunday after Michael, or something like that, on which the vigilant police of Europe will manage to fulfill their fondest dream and send us off to break stones on that work farm in Sardinia. Ah, uh, Harry, you I what? tell you, Mo, we never should have gone straight. Quitting a racket, that's okay. But we should have retired, not gone into legitimate business. It's too dangerous. <laughs> Tourist season just about over, and anyway, it turned out that almost everybody prefers traveling in those big, comfortable, fast airliners. Don't ask me why, they just do. When there wasn't any more tinkering needed on our little sliver mole, 
who was essentially the maintenance staff, ground crew, and administrative wing of Safeway's Charter Flights Incorporated, took a slight powder on me and went up to the farm. He said he had work to do, and although I couldn't think what that could be, I also couldn't think of a good reason why I should make him hang around the airport with me. About a week after that, I got my first customer. Your name is Lime. That's right, yes. My name is Butterboy. Well, Butterboy, Butter 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 well, that's, that's good. a plane, Mr. Butterboy, that will definitely get you there. Well, I'm glad to hear And where is it exactly you'd like to get? Uh, good, uh, Switzerland, but uh, maybe I'd better wait for the regular flight. I know, it's uh, all booked up, you know, for weeks ahead. We'll, we'll make you a very good rate, Mr. Butterboy. Uh, where are your bags? Uh, how many can you take of that thing there? Oh, four, easy, and five in a pinch. How many of you? Uh, when can you leave? Well, now, if you like, and after the... Uh, don't you have to get clearance for Switzerland? Oh, sure, but that won't take long. I'll just go well, out okay, the Well, you go ahead and get set. I get up on my own. I got to tend to. I'll meet you out there by your plane in a half hour. Is it too soon? For Safeway's charter flights, Mr. Butterboy, nothing is too soon. <laughs> I got my international clearance and was all fixed up with traffic right on schedule. There was some kind of excitement going on in the passenger's waiting room, but I didn't investigate. <laughs> if only I had. Well, too late now. An attendant came up with a message. Monsieur Lai? Yes, what is it? You're the plane, Monsieur Buttball has chartered. Butter, butter boy. Yes, this is the plane he chartered. What of it? He wants you to go on ahead without him. What do you mean? Go on without him, if if he's chartering the plane... He's... I know, I know, but this butterball is very eccentric. <laughs> We've had some dealings with him before. You must just do as he says. So he wants to charter the plane, not to take him to Zurich. Well, what do I get paid? He told me to give you this. Mm, thanks. And uh, what do I do when I get to Zurich? Not take him back? No, you go only as far as Paris and wait. He'll meet you there tomorrow. What? Well, what, what do you mean? What's wrong, it? Monsieur Lyle? Well, nothing. It's... Well, you just gave me a thousand bucks. Is it too little? Too little. It's almost... Twice what I expected in an ordinary... I told person. you, monsieur, this butterball is eccentric in the extreme. Oh, so you are to leave right away. That is a condition. If you leave within the next two minutes, there will be another thousand waiting for you in Paris. One and a half minutes after that, your Uncle Harry was airborne. Nice evening. Clear, still, full moon. Didn't like the look of the weather up ahead. And after about half an hour, I was alone with my thoughts. Or rather, I thought I was alone with my thoughts. Then gradually it began to dawn on me that I wasn't the only one in the plane. Somebody was sitting behind me. Somebody had been hidden before, evidently, under my duffel bag in the parachute. It's kind of spooky. It was... Well, it was, among other things... A girl on a stowaway, and a very attractive stowaway at that. In a moment, Orson Welles returns as Harry Lyme, the third man. This was by all odds the oddest. 
1,500 feet over sea level with a doorway who looked as though she belonged on a calendar instead of in an aeroplane. What are you doing here? Well? Oh, you don't feel like answering. Oh, go up in front so I can look at you. Just climb over the seat. Can't leave the stick. The weather's going to be bumpy over this mountain. You heard me. Get up here in front. Why should I? Because I say so. Suppose I don't want to. Well... Me. This 
When you are a smuggler, didn't you have a place of your own where you, where you kept your own things? I still do. It's a farm. A friend and I live on it. But up to now, we never paid much attention to the cross. Uh, oh, you mean... Obviously, that's the best place to take me, don't you think? Yes, obviously. And then what? Oh, I don't know. Uh, then, then we'll see. Well, you've got some ideas, kid. I don't. Well, I don't belong in that girl's school. That's one thing, sure. I don't belong there, and I'm not going. But about those ideas... What school? I'm telling you, it's still young enough to be going to school. A minor yet, aren't you? Now I know I'm going to jail. Not if we're careful. Now, about this idea... I don't suppose you've got a passport concealed anywhere on your person. Oh, don't be silly. Now, about this idea... We'll pick up the new ideas later. Now, let's examine some of the old ones. Getting in this plane, for instance... The reason I got in the plane was so that I wouldn't have to go to this awful finishing school where everybody speaks French and German. By the way, what is your name? Who wants to speak French and German? Not me. I want to get mad. Well, kid, you'll make somebody a lovely wife. That's what he says. My fiancé, I mean. We're secretly engaged because my uncle doesn't approve. You see, my uncle's very old-fashioned. Now, about this idea, I... Your uncle, I... we're getting somewhere, maybe. Finally, I can identify you, at least. Tell me about your uncle. There's hmm? nothing to tell. He's just an uncle. He's the one who wanted to take me off to that school in Zurich. This school in Zurich? Wait a minute. Don't tell me your uncle is... Yeah, for your butter boy, the paper cup. But he gave me a thousand dollars to... No, that was me gave you the thousand dollars. You? I'll get the attendant in the airport to bring it to you with that message. Now, about Where my... Where did you I... get the thousand dollars? Oh, I just borrowed it while he wasn't looking. Why, who wasn't looking? Warfield bought a boy to pay for cup tea. I've told you that already. He's awful rich, my Uncle Warfield is. That's why I thought you ought to kidnap me. What? And kidnap me? You know I'm that father of yours. Uncle Warfield would pay almost anything to get me to that girl's school, and you could refuse to hand me over without getting a million dollars or something. Mm. You know how that works. Holding for ransom, they call it. Then I'd have the money to marry Albert. Marry Albert. Well, what's wrong now? Well, nothing, nothing. Nothing at all. Go on. Go right on. Well, Albert is my fiancé. Oh. He won't marry me if I don't have any money. Oh. But he isn't a bit unreasonable. Mm. I'm sure he'll let you keep some of the rent and money for yourself. Shut up, Seth. You see, though, we're coming down. Down where? Oh, you mean to the ground? That's right, honey. To the ground. To the farm where I'm going to be kidnapped. Of course, if we go down, we're going to the ground. What's wrong? Well, as we sat down in front of Moe's, I told little Miss Featherhead to keep out of sight for a minute. I knew Mo. I wanted to break things to him gently. A uh, fine fella, fine fella you are. Listen, I must say, listen, 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 nothing. You Mo, promised Mo. me. I, yes, you did. I really promised. You promised. He was going straight out. He was going to keep us strictly out of trouble. And now, look, are you waiting what you want well, to say? I, I don't know what you're yeah, talking you about. You know, about but the worst is... You don't know what I'm talking about, huh, Harry. I'm surprised that you open that place. Yes, Mo, yeah, but... well, Okay, open it, I say. There. Now, then, come on out, little girl. Little girl? What do you know about a little girl? You know, went and put the snatch on some poor little child back at the airport. Now, wait a don't minute, Don't try to lie about it. They phone me. Come on out, honey. I'll protect you. That's... that's Hey, wait a minute. This is a dame. I didn't wait around to make any explanations. I just introduced them. Hyacinth, her name was Hyacinth Butterboy, and left the two of them on the farm to discuss it between themselves. Twenty minutes later, I was back in the airport in Nice with Uncle Warfield. Well, all I can see is, Lion, you have my sympathy. That niece of mine is really a caution. Yes, yeah, she's quite an original young lady, no doubt of that. I came back to assure uh, you. You need to about assure me anything. When she gave me the slip, and the attendant here told me about that phony message, mm-hmm. I knew she'd stowed away, and you were in for some trouble. You know what happened while you were flying back from that farm of yours? No. What happened now? She pulled up the airport here and said she was being held for ransom. Said she'd settled for half a million. Try to disguise her voice, but it's a teeny bit hard with us other accidents. I knew, and I said I'd pay her half a million if she'd stay away. <laughs> but, of course, I, I, I was just joking. If I was some mother, I'd get her packed off safe to that finishing school, and I will, too. Even if it finishes me. <laughs> now, then, let's get started. Started? 
Where to, Mr. Butterboy? Started for where? Well, we got to go and pick up little house and do what well, you do, Mr. Butterboy. You're her uncle. I'm not related to her, and I don't want to... Now, well, look here. I'll pay you small. No, small sir. Small. Thank you very much, Mr. Butterboy. Yeah, but but whatever your price is, it isn't enough. That's being legitimate the hard way. Right, right. No I'm price, right. Mr. Butterboy. <laughs> returns in just a moment. Story, but I never want to hear it. Got enough trouble as it is. 